Hi, third graders. Today's story is Sarah Plain and Tall by Patricia McLaughlin and illustrated by Alexandra Walner. The genre or type of story is historical fiction. Historical fiction is a story that is set in the past. As you read, look for a setting that is a real time and place in the past, realistic characters and events, and details that show the story took place in the past. Before we begin, let's meet the author, Patricia McLaughlin. As a child, Patricia McLaughlin loved to read. She never imagined that she would be a writer one day. Sarah, Plain and Tall is based on the life of a real person. McLaughlin's mother knew the real Sarah, who was married to one of her family members. In fact, as the book grew and changed, McLaughlin added details from her own life. Parts of the story also come from the lives of McLaughlin's parents, husband, and children. McLaughlin says that children often ask her why she writes. She writes for the same reasons that people read, to find out what happens, and to find out more about herself. As we read, let's think about our essential question. What was life on the prairie like for the pioneers? Let's begin. Anna Whitting lives on a farm on the prairie with her father and her younger brother, Caleb. Caleb likes to hear about Mama, who died soon after he was born and who loved to sing. One night, Papa tells the children he has put an advertisement in the newspaper for a wife. Their neighbor's new wife, Maggie, had come in answer to an advertisement. Papa reads the letter he has received from Sarah, who lives with her brother near the sea in Maine. Papa, Anna, and Caleb write letters to Sarah. They find out that she has a cat named Seal and that she sings. Now Sarah is coming for a month's visit to see how it is. Sarah came in the spring. She came through green grass fields that bloomed with Indian paintbrush, red and orange, and blue-eyed grass. Papa got up early for the long day's trip to the train and back. He brushed his hair so slick and shiny that Caleb laughed. He wore a clean blue shirt and a belt instead of suspenders. He fed and watered the horses, talking to them as he hitched them up to the wagon. Old Bess, calm and kind. Jack, wild-eyed, reaching over to nip Bess on the neck. Clear day, Bess said Papa, rubbing her nose. Settle down, Jack. He leaned his head on Jack. And then Papa drove off along the dirt road to fetch Sarah, Papa's new wife. Maybe, maybe our new mother. Gophers ran back and forth across the road, stopping to stand up and watch the wagon. Far off in the field, a woodchuck ate and listened, ate and listened. Caleb and I did our chores without talking. We shoveled out the stalls and laid down new hay. We fed the sheep. We swept and straightened and carried wood and water, and then our chores were done. Caleb pulled on my shirt. Is my face clean? He asked. Can my face be too clean? He looked alarmed. No, your face is clean, but not too clean, I said. Caleb slipped his hand into mine as we stood on the porch, watching the road. He was afraid. Will she be nice? He asked. Like Maggie? Sarah will be nice, I told him. How far away is Maine? He asked. You know how far. Far away, by the sea. Will Sarah bring some sea? He asked. No, you cannot bring the sea. The sheep ran in the field, and far off the cows moved slowly to the pond like turtles. Will she like us? asked Caleb very softly. I watched a marsh hawk wheel down behind the barn. He looked up at me. Of course she will like us. He answered his own question. We are nice, he added, making me smile. We waited and watched. I rocked on the porch and Caleb rolled a marble on the wood floor, back and forth, back and forth. The marble was blue. We saw the dust from the wagon first, rising above the road, above the heads of Jack and Old Bess. 
Caleb climbed up onto the porch roof and shaded his eyes. A bonnet, he cried. I see a yellow bonnet. The dogs came out from under the porch, ears up, their eyes on the cloud of dust bringing Sarah. The wagon passed the fenced field and the cows and sheep looked up too. It rounded the windmill and the barn and the windbreak of Russian olive that Mama had planted long ago. Nick began to bark, then Lottie, and the wagon clattered into the yard and stopped by the steps. Hush, said Papa to the dogs, and it was quiet. Sarah stepped down from the wagon, a cloth bag in her hand. She reached up and took off her yellow bonnet, smoothing back her brown hair into a bun. She was plain and tall. Did you bring some sea? cried Caleb beside me. Something from the sea, said Sarah, smiling. And me. She turned and lifted a black case from the wagon. And seal, too. Carefully, she opened the case and Seal, gray with white feet, stepped out. Lottie lay down, her head on her paws, staring. Nick leaned down to sniff. Then he lay down too. The cat will be good in the barn, said Papa. For mice. Sarah smiled. She will be good in the house too. Sarah took Caleb's hand, then mine. Her hands were large and rough. She gave Caleb a shell, a moon snail, she called it, that was curled and smelled of salt. The gulls fly high and drop the shells on the rocks below, she told Caleb. When the shell is broken, they eat what is inside. That is very smart, said Caleb. For you, Anna, said Sarah, a sea stone. And she gave me the smoothest and whitest stone I had ever seen. The sea washes over and over and around the stone rolling it until it is round and perfect. That is very smart too, said Caleb. He looked up at Sarah. We do not have the sea here. Sarah turned and looked out over the plains. No, she said, there is no sea here. But the land rolls a little like the sea. My father did not see her look, but I did. And I knew that Caleb had seen it too. Sarah was not smiling. Sarah was already lonely. In a month's time, the preacher might come to marry Sarah and Papa. And a month was a long time, time enough for her to change her mind and leave us. Papa took Sarah's bags inside, where her room was ready with a quilt on the bed and blue flax dried in a vase on the night table. Seal stretched and made a small cat sound. I watched her circle the dogs and sniff the air. Caleb came out and stood beside me. When will we sing, he whispered. I shook my head, turning the white stone over and over in my hand. I wished everything was as perfect as the stone. I wished that Papa and Caleb and I were perfect for Sarah. I wished we had a sea of our own. The dogs loved Sarah first. Lottie slept beside her bed, curled in a soft circle, and Nick leaned his face on the covers in the morning watching for the first sign that Sarah was awake. No one knew where Seal slept. Seal was a roamer. Sarah's collection of shells sat on the windowsill. A scallop, she told us, picking up the shells one by one. A sea clam, an oyster, a razor clam, and a conch shell. If you put it to your ear, you can hear the sea. She put it to Caleb's ear, then mine. Papa listened too. Then Sarah listened once more, with a look so sad and far away that Caleb leaned against me. At least Sarah can hear the sea, he whispered. Papa was quiet and shy with Sarah, and so was I. But Caleb talked to Sarah from morning until the light left the sky. Where are you going? he asked. To do what? To pick flowers, said Sarah. I'll hang some of them upside down and dry them so they'll keep some color and we can have flowers all winter long. I'll come too, cried Caleb. Sarah said winter, he said to me. That means Sarah will stay. Together we picked flowers, paintbrush and clover and prairie violets. There were buds on the wild roses that climbed up the paddock fence. 
The roses will bloom in early summer, I told Sarah. I looked to see if she knew what I was thinking. Summer was when the wedding would be, might be, Sarah and Papa's wedding. We hung the flowers from the ceiling in little bunches. I've never seen this before, said Sarah. What is it called? Bride's Bonnet, I told her. Caleb smiled at the name. We don't have this by the sea, she said. We have seaside goldenrod and wild asters and woolly ragwort. Woolly ragwort? Caleb whooped. He made up a song. Woolly ragwort all around, woolly ragwort on the ground. Woolly ragwort grows and grows, woolly ragwort in your nose. Sarah and Papa laughed, and the dogs lifted their heads and thumped their tails against the wood floor. Seal sat on a kitchen chair and watched us with yellow eyes. We ate Sarah's stew, the late light coming through the windows. Papa had baked bread that was still warm from the fire. The stew is fine, said Papa. Aya, yeah. Sarah nodded. The bread, too. What does aya yeah mean? asked Caleb. In Maine, it means yes said Sarah. Do you want more stew? Uh, Aya, yeah, said Caleb. Aya, uh, yeah, echoed my father. After dinner, Sarah told us about William. He has a gray and white boat named Kitty Wake. She looked out the window. That is a small gull found way off the shore where William fishes. There are three ants who live near us. They wear silk dresses and no shoes. You would love them. Aya. Uh, yeah said Caleb. Does your brother look like you? I asked. Yes, said Sarah. He is plain and tall. At dusk, Sarah cut Caleb's hair on the front steps, gathering his curls and scattering them on the fence and ground. Seal batted some hair around the porch as the dogs watched. Why? asked Caleb. For the birds, said Sarah. They will use it for their nests. Later, we can look for nests of curls. Sarah said later. Caleb whispered to me as we spread his hair about. Sarah will stay. Sarah cut Papa's hair too. No one else saw, but I found him behind the barn, tossing the pieces of hair into the wind for the birds. Sarah brushed my hair and tied it up in back with the rose velvet ribbon she had brought from Maine. She brushed hers long and free and tied it back too, and we stood side by side, looking into the mirror. I looked taller, like Sarah, and fair and thin, and with my hair pulled back, I looked a little like her daughter, Sarah's daughter. And then it was time for singing. Sarah sang us a song we had never heard before as we sat on the porch, insects buzzing in the dark, the rustle of cows in the grasses. It was called Sumer is a Kumanin, and she taught it to us all, even Papa, who sang as if he had never stopped singing. Sumer is a Kumanin, Nura sing cuckoo. What is Sumer? asked Caleb. He said it, Sumer, the way Sarah had said it. Summer, said Papa and Sarah at the same time. Caleb and I looked at each other. Summer was coming. I hope you enjoyed this story, Sarah Plain and Tall. I'll see you next time. Bye.